Hello and welcome to another Beehive growth tutorial. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into getting your Beehive publication tip top ship shape for uh, highly effective SEO so that your content can be discovered by search engines and you can start obtaining direct organic traffic, new users to your Beehive publication. Now, before we jump in, I want to give a quick overview of what SEO is and what it means. SEO stands for search engine optimization and is the process of modifying and optimizing your content so that Google and other search engines can more easily parse and understand what your content's about. Google and other search engines index, which means they search or crawl like a library where you have the books in order all organized. Google will index billions of websites, analyzing all of the content within each one so that when a user makes a Google search, they know exactly which page is going to be the most relevant to that search. Google has really perfected this over the past 30 years and is quite good. It's why everybody uses Google and, and why Google is now a verb. What's going on under the hood is pretty interesting. Google has uh, a myriad of ways in which they weight different characteristics of a website for relevance. In real time, when somebody makes that Google search, they are comparing the search to their index to find the best content. When you do a Google search, generally the first 100 results are going to show up. So showing up on that first page uh, can be very valuable. Most users don't go beyond the first page, but if you can show up there, you can get a very powerful source of traffic that can be very valuable, defensible, and bring in net new users on an ongoing basis. So jumping in, one of the things that we get a lot of questions about over here at Beehive is a user spins up their Beehive publication and then does a Google search for their brand name and they don't see their results pop up. And generally, almost always, this is because they have not yet told Google that they exist. Google doesn't know that their site is available or should be included in the index. We're going to go through the step-by-step -step process of getting your site ready and letting Google know that you have valuable things to share with the world. So getting started, we're going to be using two tools. One is called Google Search Console. The other one is Bing Webmaster Tools that will cover Google and Bing, which are the two largest search engines, and that should cover a vast majority of the traffic out there and the people searching for terms that may be relevant to your content. Once we get into the verification and the indexing of your site, we're going to jump into some of the tools that Beehive provides you to structure data in a way that is valuable to Google. The first step is to go to search.google.com slash search console. I'll include the links in the video notes below, but when you get to the site and you create your account, you're going to drop into here where it says add property. Now, I've gone through this process and I already chose to reserve my site for the turn. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to have a screen that pops up that says you need to verify your site. We're going to go with the URL version, which is going to let you enter the URL. So in this case, https slash the turn .com. You can also do this for custom domains. And it's going to ask you to verify that you own the site. Right now with Beehive, there are two ways you can do that. One is by the Google Tag Manager method, and the other one is the Google Analytics method. In order to execute one of those two approaches, you're going to have to either create a Google Analytics account, or you're going to have to create a Google Tag Manager account. If you go the route of using Google Analytics, you're going to create your Google Analytics account, and you're going to find this measurement ID when you get started. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that over to our Beehive account, go into Settings, Website, Analytics, and we're going to drop that right here. If you do just choose to do the Tag Manager account, maybe your, your Tag Manager route, you may be more cognizant about privacy. You're going to create a free Google Tag Manager account. You're going to grab this right up here, and you're going to similarly drop that ID into the uh, console here and hit Save. Once you do that, give it about five minutes to update and you can come back to your site, you can hit the verify button, and this is the experience that you'll see. So now you're in, you've told Google that you own this URL, and you'll start seeing data show up here over time. Now, the next step, in order to tell Google that you have pages that, are, that should be indexed, you're gonna go in here, and every Beehive publication comes with a sitemap. So it's gonna be your URL slash sitemap.xml. So you'll see this really strange looking site. This is totally normal. This is exactly what it's supposed to look like. You're just going to take that sitemap.xml part 
and you don't actually have to copy and paste it. You can just type it in, but we're going to drop it under this tab where it says sitemaps and hit submit. Once we do that, this is telling Google that we have content that should be shown. Now, it's uh, saying it couldn't process, but it, it can. It was successfully processed there. And so now we'll give it a couple days and it takes a little bit of time, but basically we submitted it and it was read. Over time, Google will incorporate our pages into the index and you'll start showing up in those Google results. As a tip, we recommend resubmitting your sitemap every time you post a new piece of content. So if you're posting a daily, you can come in here and you can resubmit daily. If you're doing a weekly, we recommend resubmitting weekly. There's not going to be a penalty, obviously, for resubmitting more often. But doing that basically just flags to Google, hey, you should come back and re-index our site. Of course, if you publish more often, the more often Google will be expecting you to have new content. And so the quicker you'll be indexed. But if it takes the first time, if it takes a week, that's totally normal. It's not an immediate process. So this is the very basic process for getting your site included in the Google results. Once you're in there, you'll start seeing the number of impressions your, your site and your pages are getting and the number of clicks you're getting organically. In these this performance view, you'll be able to see which URLs, how your URLs are performing on a SEO basis and, and whatnot. The other side of this is getting set up with Bing Webmaster Tools. We're going to create a Bing Webmaster Tools account. The link to that will also be in the comments. What you can do once you get to this screen, it's very similar and it's a little bit easier. You go to Add Site. We can actually import our settings from Google Search Console. So I'm going to do that. It makes it super simple. We're going to go through this process and log in with the same account we created our Search Console account with. And we are going to just do the one site. And it should be that easy. Give it a moment. There we go. We've added now our site to Google and Bing. And similarly, we're going to go over here. We're going to submit that sitemap. We're going to grab that URL. We're going to go to the turn. Cool. Because we imported it here, it's processing. The status will update when it's complete. And similar to Google, we'll see the, the performance after everything's indexed and there is data to show here. There's a bunch of tools we can get into that we're not going to cover today, but there's a bunch of settings within both of these tools that you can explore that can provide you valuable signals on, on how to further optimize your SEO that uh, perhaps we'll cover in a future video, but this gets you up and running. So with that, we are now discoverable by Google and Bing. And now it really comes down to the content we're creating. So we have a guide to SEO that covers uh, the basics of keyword research, keyword selection, and how to structure the keyword information within a blog post. But and I'm not going to cover in depth those things, the art of SEO, but I'm going to show some of those features within our console and how they play into your overall picture of SEO. So going into the right console, if we look, there's going to be a couple things we want to look at. So the first thing is going to be under the website, this slug. When you write a new post, you want your keyword that you're targeting with the specific piece of content to include some variation of the keyword you're targeting in the slug, which is just part of the URL. This will help provide some context to Google as to what your content is about, but you don't want to overlook modifying that. If we wanted to rank for best golf courses in the US, we might have the slug the best US golf courses. And maybe the post title, if we were writing this content, would be top 10 best golf courses in the United States. That'll be important in a moment. From there, we have a title for our article. This is going to show up on our Beehive blog, the web archive. We have a slug for the site, best US golf courses. Now we're going to move to the SEO tab. So there's a couple different kind of distinctions here. You're going to have your page title, which is going to be this. This is going to show up on your web archive on the actual page. If we look at the web version, this is what's going to show up at the top. This is what's called an H1 tag. There is one H1 tag per page. And your H1 tag is the title of your article. So that's where that plays in. So we have best golf courses in that H1 tag, which is the one of the best practices. We have the search term that we're ranking for, best golf courses in the URL. It doesn't have to be together. And in fact, a little bit of variation does help a little bit. The last step is going to be to match those with what's going to show up in the actual search engine. So you can keep it like this, but we could also do something that's a little bit different so that we can show just a little bit of variation. And this is going to be what people see when they search for 
the specific keyword we're doing. Comprehensive guide to U.S. golf courses to best, actually, with 2023, showing that it's up to date. Cool. This is what users are going to see when they do the Google search. They're going to click on this link in Google or Bing, and then they're going to see the screen that we just looked at in the preview, which is this one, and it is just going to provide that, that further context. If we then want to get into, this is non-technical SEO. This is more optimizing for social media and shareability. Google doesn't like clickbait. Google wants your results to be very objective, up-to-date, and timely. But for social media, we know that people are more likely to click on sensationalized or clickbaity titles. So we might want to say something like, top can't miss golf courses across the U.S. So now this is what's going to show up in that title spot when you share this on Facebook, for example, or if you share it on Twitter or LinkedIn. So again, it's slightly different. It's a little bit more sensationalized than our very objective title up here, but it just provides one further way that you can optimize for shareability. And just to be clear, this these titles, these don't play a role into the discoverability in the search engine. But if you share this on social media and users share it as well or read through and click through, it's just one more way that you can get eyeballs on your content. And from there, it's really basically that simple. What we would do from here is within the article, or maybe our H2, which is our top as our second level heading, we might say one would be an overview. And then we do criteria, how we judge those. Criteria for ranking courses. Overview of top golf courses. And then I'll go from there. These are less important, but can provide, again, that context for the overall H1. So if we just type in some content here, we'll do a little bit more down here. You can start to see this hierarchy. One H1 moving to H2s, and they all are about the same thing conceptually. This isn't a hard and fast rule. If you're doing some sort of like daily news, you obviously want to be more objective and, and cover the news. In that case, we recommend submitting your publication and verifying with Google Publishing, which will allow you to show up in the discoverability sections and Google News sections of the Google properties. This basically just go goes into some of those pretty low-hanging fruit areas of how you can optimize your Beehive site and your content for SEO. I'll include the link to the more comprehensive keyword research and keyword selection guide that we put together. But in the meantime, feel, please feel free to drop any comments in this video. We hope that you found this valuable and we can't wait to see what you build. Thank you so much.